Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are attending this webinar from. Welcome to this seminar of Hager, which is on energy efficiency in buildings, energy monitoring versus energy management. A few things first. Just before we get started, everybody, all the attendees will be on listening only mode. And please note that this webinar is set to listen only mode and the audience can listen to the presentation but cannot ask questions when the presentation is happening. At the end of the presentation, you will have a few minutes slot to ask the questions and you can put the questions in the chat box. So let's start with the presentation. So this is the webinar on energy efficiency in building. And my name is Shanoi, and I'm part of Hager's future application team for the Aminyat region. I have a background in sales and marketing, and in diverse product ranges, coming from electrical switch gear to building automation. And I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Joining me in the presentation today, is our expert on energy efficiency product. Ali Demirbas is the product and marketing manager working in Hager, Turkey, and he has a long experience in managing energy efficiency products. Hello, Ali, and welcome to the Hello, Shanoi. Thank you very much for this organization. Thank you. So let's start. Let's start. Let me begin by asking a question. How much electricity are we using today? And how much electricity would be needed in the future? We all use electricity every day, and we may not realize it, but we use it a lot. We use it to power the lights, our phones, the appliances that we use, the trains that we travel, and also the industries that we are working on. Electricity today, is an integral part of our lives and is also at the center of powering the economy. And the way we are using it today is expected that the demand for electricity is going to grow and is going to grow at an exponential rate. And we'll see what are the drivers on this. In fact, at the rate at which we are using, it's believed that in the next 20 to 30 years, it's going to reach staggering heights. And International Energy Agency, which is an authority on all kinds of energy, has published some reports, and I will just look at that in a while. So they're predicting, they're forecasting that from the current consumption in 2020, about 29,000 terawatt hours, and just for the information, a tera stands for 10 to the power of 12, and kilo is 10 to the power of 3. It will reach around 42,000 terawatt hours by 2040, which means that it's going to have an increase of 45% in the next 20 years. And just to give a perspective, it's going to be around 50% of what we need in the next 25 years. That is a phenomenal increase in terms of the electricity required. This brings us to two points. Number one, what are the drivers which are which is causing this? And number two is what is the impact we're going to have with such an increase? So let's look at the drivers first. So the first key driver in this is the increase in population. Currently, we are about 7.7 .7 billion people on the surface of Earth. And by around 2040, it is expected to reach about 9 billion. That means in the next 20 years, you need to have electricity for 1.3 billion people. That is, again, a substantial increase. Second is urbanization. More and more people today are moving into urban areas like cities, looking for better opportunities, better life, and also having better monetary benefits. Currently, it's about 55% of the global population are living in urban areas, and by 2050, it is expected that two thirds of the population will be sitting in, will be living in cities, which means that today's cities are going to be becoming bigger and you're going to have more cities coming up. Again, you need a lot of electricity for the infrastructure of these cities. The third one is transportation. 
with bigger cities and with more people in the cities you need to have mass rapid transport systems which today are already moving into electricity and also if you see the electric vehicle rate increase is going to increase and by 2040 50 percent of the cars would be electric vehicles so all of these are needing power to charge the fourth one is space cooling which is air conditioning with the household incomes increasing more and more people today are using electricity and with more cities you're going to have offices buildings malls and schools everywhere you will need an electricity to power the cooling so that's again a quite a substantial increase in cooling and the requirement for electricity the next is ict and ict stands for internet and communication technology and Today, we are living in a very hyper-connected world. You have your smartphones, and in the future, you're going to have IoT devices. All of this is going to generate a tsunami of data. And to support this activity, you're going to have data centers, you're going to have huge server farms, which are all power hungry, and they're going to consume a lot of power. It's believed that around 20 to 25% of the electricity produced would be used by the ICT segment itself. So, that is quite phenomenal again. Next comes the appliances at homes that we use and wherever we're using those appliances, they are increasing, they're becoming larger, and these again are going to consume electricity. And finally, industries, which are part of the economy and economy grows, you need more power for the industries. We also have to keep in mind that it is not just the phones and the cars which will consume power, but also it needs power in the manufacturing. So it consumes power while manufacturing and also when you run them. So, so there are, is a double impact. So these are the key drivers which are going to have an exponential growth in the demand for electricity. Now let's look at what the impact is going to have. So the first impact will be on the generation side. So generation will be under tremendous stress in terms of producing more electricity and they have to invest in terms of scaling up their production. Today, again, 55% to 60% of the power generation is coming from coal and gas. So these are non-renewable and at some point in time in the future, they're going to be depleted. So therefore, renewables have to be in increased and you need to put in, again, a lot of uh, investments in developing new technologies in the solar and wind and all of this additional cost is going to impact the user in terms of cost increase on per unit price for the electricity this also has a huge demand in terms of environment because electricity production is a major source of carbon dioxide pollution that is happening and greenhouse gas emission and today as per the paris agreement all governments are under tremendous pressure to cut down on the carbon emissions so there are already taxes being implemented so all of this again is going to impact cost and therefore the cost of electricity will increase so what do we do so how can we do to help ourselves in terms of having more energy and lesser cost and the answer in that is in energy efficiency which means that we have to use less energy and optimize the use of energy. So energy management will play an important role in helping with energy efficiency. And this brings us to the topic of today's discussion. So for, for some, energy efficiency could be just as simple as changing your old bulb into an LED bulb or changing uh, your old air conditioners into a new one and so on. And energy management system implementation will be a key aspect of improving energy efficiency in buildings. So why are buildings so important when you talk about energy efficiency is because buildings as an end segment consumes nearly 35% of all the electricity that is being produced. So it's very important as to implement energy management systems to improve the energy efficiency in buildings. So let's look at what is an energy management system and how can we implement it in simple way in terms of a definition for energy management we can broadly define it as proactive organized and systematic management of energy use in a building or organization to satisfy both the environmental and economic requirements so three key 
words here proactive that means that you should not be reactive you have to have certain steps in place some installations have to be implemented and you need to be systematically checking it so there are four simple steps which you can actually implement in terms of energy management the first and foremost is collecting data so you need to have data in terms of the energy consumption so it could be as simple as your electricity bills it could be meters it could be connected meters which are connected to a system once you collect the data you need to analyze the data and then you need to identify opportunities where you can look at making some changes in terms of the electricity consumption it could be sometimes that the air conditioners are on during the weekend or during the after office hours so these are some actions which you have to take so once you take the actions then you need to track the progress regularly and see whether these progress that you are making are aligned with your goals or you if you have to take some corrective actions so these are the four simple steps in energy management so collecting the data identify opportunities take action and track your progress with this i would like to come to the end of my presentation and i would just add one more slide here stating that energy measured can only be managed and if you don't measure your energy you cannot really manage it so this is something extremely important and with this i would like to invite ali to have this discussion and share his knowledge and experience on energy efficiency hi ali welcome ali hello hello shanoi thank you very much uh, for the good introduction uh, yes so so ali we discuss about the energy management system and uh, can you tell us something about what is meant by energy monitoring and how important is it in terms of uh, as a part of the energy management system uh yes shanoi the energy monitoring system uh, is a part of energy efficiency uh, in the beginning of the program you mentioned about how we require energy much more than before uh, today demand of energy is getting higher but our energy sources are limited today uh, most of the energy is coming from uh, fossil fossil fuels from earth and uh, they have a limit, uh, limits this is the mean of, mean of supply and demand balance our demand is getting higher but supply is steady in the case in this case energy prices hit all time heights than before during your presentation i would like to point uh, the issue again Uh, according to the investigations uh, our population will increase uh, more than 20% in the following 20 years as your presentation uh, as you present during the 20 years 45% of electrical energy uh, consumption increased most of this usage around 70% is coming from homes business uh, centers schools and uh, other facilities this means now we are using energy more than industry requires this means uh, energy is now mainly a major part of our life what we need to do we need to avoid extra cost for not decreasing our efficiency with using electric electricity energy only way is uh, energy efficiency for this what we can do for the energy efficiency we need to do energy monitoring for this investment if we return back to your question about what is energy monitoring Energy monitoring aims to provide users with information about their consumption and is carried out using energy monitoring software to get uh, gather consumption data analyze it and then provide useful information directly to clients device this shows 
this shows to users how much energy they are using and how it's used any time of the day. So on the slide, there is three uh, steps are available for implementing energy monitoring. First, we need to measure. Second, we need to analyze. And after that, we must manage. This three package includes energy monitoring. Great, great. So, Ali, now that you mentioned what is energy monitoring, could you tell us also the benefits of having an energy monitoring system? Uh, for sure, benefits of the energy uh, monitoring system, we can name its benefits in five steps. Uh, first, and the most important one is reducing costs. Energy monitoring system allows you to significantly uh, reduce utility costs across the board, including heating, cooling, lighting, and the water consumption. Energy monitoring system tracks detailed usage over time and store it within centralized uh, system. So you will always have to access your facilities, historical energy data. This allows to uh, user get better budget for energy usage based on time of year. The second is maintenance costs. As we know, uh, many uh, failures happens in one system and the, in the electricity, it happens too much. With energy monitoring system, you detect failures previously on your system for preventing fatal failures. Energy monitoring is like check up to uh, check up to your facility. If you go to the doctor every month for checking up, you will not catch and disease anymore. Same mentality is for the facility. And the third and the final one is improving facility performance. This means sustainability. Energy management system improves building performance uh, as well as before by reducing energy waste and uh, detect hidden uh, energy wasters and operating codes, you are naturally making more room in your budget for other areas of the business, like marketing, promotions, salaries, and the product uh, spends. This means, uh, if we finalize, the main benefit is saving money. With using less energy, we, not, we will not decrease our performance, but uh, we will save a, uh, money with detecting hidden money investors. Right, right. So, so Ali, Ali, can you also tell us how we understand the benefits of uh, energy monitoring systems? What are the various components that would be required to implement such a solution? Uh, yes, for the energy monitoring so solution, as we uh, said before, we have three steps, measure, analyze, and manage. Okay. Here is our map for the energy monitoring system. What we said, we need to measure, analyze, and manage step. According to this step, today, uh, for the energy monitoring, offers this connection map to users. At the step one, from measurement side, you collect all data from devices which has communication protocol via energy monitoring server. In the second step, all data which comes from devices are collected to any server system and they are ready for understanding uh, and reporting. Step three, analyzed data will be uh, sent to for saving with different reporting methodology. As a, uh, as a conclusion, we have three steps. We need three main components. Measurement devices, 
converters and uh, energy monitoring software. Right, right. So now that you have explained Ali the, the various components of an energy monitoring solution, could you also give us some insight on what is the Hager offer today? For sure. Uh, today, Hager offers measure, analyze solutions. Measure and analyze solutions. Most important player on the measurement side is energy meters. And today, Hager can offer any type of power measurement devices and the energy meters from main switch gear to final distribution board. Advantages of the Hager new energy meters, uh, new energy meters are you don't need to use current transformers anymore. It is like a plug and play. You don't need the extra revision and workload for implementing your system for monitoring. Today, uh, as the slide you can see, uh, Hager offers uh, the values starting from 40 amps to 100, uh, 125 amps direct connection with single and three phase connection under six models. All meters give you give you necessary electrical parameters, uh, parameter values, which will be necessary for next steps. Another solution, uh, other than energy meter, today Hager offers new generation MCCB with integrated class uh, one energy meter, which is named HQ plus energy version. As we know, MCBs are the main player on the main switch uh, boards and the sub distribution boards. Integrated class one energy meter MCBs help us to implement our system to energy monitoring system easily. Uh, so this means we can add new measurement device uh, as a player. It's electromechanical devices. Energy version HQ Plus is more than MCB and it can be adapted fully to energy monitoring system. When you use energy version HQ Plus uh, MCBs, we don't need to use extra network analyzers on switch uh, switch gear. What we said in the network, uh, what we said, network analyzers are necessary to use on uh, main switch gear but by using HQ plus MCCB you don't need to use uh, network analysis or power measurement devices anymore so you will not use uh, three current transformers anymore too MCBs and on the screen you can see small OLED display available on the device which provides to set parameters and measurement values on network then people say uh, all mcbs are hidden in the switch gear uh, what we can do with this display it is okay it is for setting and also higher offers external display you can see all parameters uh, in front of the switch gear and another option is configuration tool allows to collect live data from network so uh, your maintenance team, technical team, or energy efficiency companies can investigate network before acting energy monitoring system. Many energy efficiency companies do a pre-investigation of the network before implementing solution. So normally they are using data log, uh, mostly energy efficiency companies use data loggers and any other devices for understanding network quality. Configuration tool allows to users this advantage stick on panel, read all data by your phone, tablet, or computer. So in the measurement side, 
our players are Matters and uh, New Generation MCCBs. So these data are collected and directly sent to the Agardio manager. Agardio manager is a type of converter. It's a heart of system and it's a bridge between measure and monitor side. In market, uh, you can see many uh, devices such as Agardio manager, which uh, collects the data from Modbus, uh, converts to the any protocol for IP or uh, directly in Ethernet connection. Uh, but Agardio manager is different than other converters. What is this? There is onboard analog and digital input outputs for defining alarms on system. If you want to use these options for your system, you have to add and pay extra modules on your meters. And today, this kind of input output modules are only available on power measurement devices system for the energy monitoring uh, system if uh, or external system another option is backnet adaptation backnet is a main protocol for the building management system which provide all measured data from the energy monitoring system uh, directly can connect with the BMS system. There is also SD card uh, option available on the device. Uh, this means you can do a data log. Data log allows to collect all measured parameters to SD card, even communication lost on your system. Our final step for the energy monitoring is Vesolation. In here, Hagar Solution comes with Agardio software, provides many reporting options to users. This section is man uh, Manage System. One of main reporting is energy consumption reports, and with energy consumption reports, our goal will be separation of energy consumption in every corner, which energy meter or any measurement devices uh, which has a communication protocol exists. You can match consumption between the areas. In this way, you can analyze which unit consume how much energy. This reporting brings us some benefits such as energy transparency on every region and you can detect potential savings. All these things can be possible anywhere by using any web server. So, Shannon, these are the uh, main uh, uh, main options and the Hagar offers for the energy monitoring system. Uh, I want to do, summarize some of the steps for the product family. Hope it, uh, hopefully it is clear. Right, it's very clear. Right. So what you're saying is that Hagar today has a complete offer. So we have the server, we have the visualization tool that can be used to look at the, the energy consumption. And we have this meters that can be connected to the feeders and connected to the server. And we also have this new generation of MCCBs where you don't need to use an extra device to measure the power because the MCCB itself can measure the power and communicate with the server. Right? Yes, you are, you are yeah, right. And also connect uh, the Hager ACBs as well onto the system. Uh, we can uh, we can connect the ACBs also. We, uh, ACBs, uh, some of the ACBs has a communication protocol. So right. this uh, this can be uh, ACBs also can be adaptable for the system. In the beginning of the slide, you uh, see even uh, ACBs can be adaptable for the energy monitoring system. Great. So now only that you have explained to us what is an energy monitoring system and what are the benefits and also what are the components of an energy monitoring system. Uh, can you give us also some insights on what is the kind of uh, cost saving and kind of payback period you have, can have when somebody is installing such a system in a building? 
Shenoy, there is a different uh, questions about this segment. As we said, the energy uh, efficiency and the energy management is a kind of investment. And uh, people want to uh, get back their money after uh, doing this investment. So this kind of investment, it is not uh, necessary. It is all about uh, what you are doing. When you start uh, to monitor, you can easily understand hidden money investors. All informations uh, from your network will be transparent, like doing health checkup of your building. So you will detect major failures, which will cost for you and replace more efficient consumer against old one, like changing old style vapor, uh, vaporized lamp against um, LED lamps. It with the one of the example and uh, checking your devices with the A plus energy efficiency classes or something like that. These are the minor changes will turn back uh, good savings. All doing this on the long term, you can save your investment for monitoring. According to the energy efficiency implementers, all these investments annual payback is around uh, 12 and 18 months, according to your uh, implementation and how you uh, read your data seriously. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, this, this, means, uh, this means you can pay back uh, your, uh, your investments in a, approximately two years and a one year. These are these are the periods, you know. Right, that, that's very interesting to know. Okay, I think now that we have covered the whole uh, in the energy monitoring system in terms of what they are and what are the benefits you're going to have. I would also like to touch base upon some of the misconceptions or misunderstandings that are there uh, about this whole system. So could you tell us something on uh, the difference between energy meters and energy monitoring systems, please? Yeah, for the energy meters and the energy monitoring system, some of the market, as you are right, uh, there is a misunderstanding about two systems. Uh, energy meters are main part of the energy management systems, actually. And uh, they vary according, uh, according to the place where they mount. In the market, there is misunderstanding about uh, meters. At the main switch here in the slide, you can see most uh, mostly you uh, meters used called as power measurement devices or network analyzers or power and energy meters. These meters are more complicated than other meters. These meters can measure more than 72 parameters. And these are the deep details for the network. Other submeters uh, for the sub-distribution board and the final board are only for energy and power. Energy and power parameters are most important parameters for the energy monitoring system, actually. Uh, it varies, Shenoy. It varies according to the from the entrance. It's more complicated to the final step. It is more simple. Meters can be. all this together. Uh, meters uh, means these are the energy monitoring system. Only one device will be not enough. It is like okay, uh, you are checking your. Um, for example, if we talk about a body, uh, if you are checking uh, uh, checking up your lungs only, uh, okay, there is no problem in CO at your lung, but uh, for the other organs, you are not to be sure. For this system, we need to 
investigate all parts of the building. This is the meaning of the energy monitoring system, Chairman. So it's more of a connected system when you talk about the energy yes, monitoring. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. Right. Very interesting, Ali. So Ali, I'd like to talk about the second misconception sometimes we have is uh, what's the difference between energy monitoring and an energy management system? Because these two words are sometimes uh, used and uh, there are some kind of misunderstanding on these two words. So uh, if we look at the total picture of the energy management system, uh, management is a general structure. Monitoring is a subcategory of the management. In the monitoring, we spoke about only electrical consumption monitoring for facilities. For, uh, for the management side, it includes heating, cooling, gas and uh, flow meter consumptions too. If you check the slide, you can detect all system in one connection map. All different monitoring and the controlling system protocols are different than each other. So, uh, in management system, we combine all of them in one structure and controlling, uh, controlling them via uh, IO modules. Most of the commercial uh, facilities management system is like this. Now, we give solution uh, to monitoring and the building automation site, thanks to a guardian manager with BACnet adaptation, now we can combine all this solution to building management system. This is called as energy management, uh, uh, energy management and or building management system. Uh, so this is the idea, Shenoy. Monitoring is a part of management. Great. Right, Ali. So, Ali, I think, uh, uh, thank you for your very deep insight on this energy management solutions. And uh, I think we are reaching the end of our presentation and we would like to open up this session now for uh, questions. Okay. So the question is one is Can you please elaborate more on the usage uh, energy efficient energy? Uh, so it is a uh, the answer is hidden in the presentation actually. It is about you reading your system. All this hardware gives you the uh, reporting to you. Uh, for example, you start uh, you start to check your system uh, and reporting and benchmark every consumption. Uh, for example, if we spoke about if we spoke about the industrial facilities, there is a lot of uh, machines in the industrial facilities, and the, every machine uh, has a steady consumption values. When you compare every machine's uh, energy consumption separately, if one machine is different than others, there will be a problem. So it should be a uh, it should be an end of life, or you need a maintenance. If you change your system, you uh, you will check uh, the energy consumption fees at the end of the month. Another option is for the lighting system. Uh, you can, for the end users building, uh, it is hard to understand. Okay, so changing the devices, uh, we are in the houses, we are not uh, consume energy too much. How we can do in the energy, uh, in the houses, we can implement this energy uh, monitoring system with the KNX system, uh, with the defining and setting alarm, we can dim the lights and operating the, uh, everything else by doing this. But uh, commercial and the industrial facilities uh, are more energy users. Uh, they can face me uh, 
they can face the end of months bill with doing minimum changes and the rethink reports. You can see the hidden manifestors, for example, in a one time, uh, one, one area's uh, illumination is unnecessary open. So you can detect or some of the devices are broken. There is a problem in the, on the HVAC or unnecessary heating and cooling usage. So these are the uh, goes back with a saving to us. It will be many, many, many scenarios for uh, this area. Okay, another question. Is this MCBs are used in any of ethnoc group? Uh, ethnoc, could you explain the ethnoc? It's um, it's a MCBs complying with the standards at the internal ARC requirements. So uh, our colleagues, uh, for the details, for the much deep, deeper details, we will share uh, the all technical details by our colleagues with you, with the standards and the test reports, everything else, so uh, you can compare. Ha, okay, Abu Dhabi National. Uh, so, Shanoi, this is your region, yeah, yeah. actually. Could you uh, give an answer for this issue? Right, so I, I would like to say that uh, uh, this MCCB, this new range of MCCBs has been recently launched and uh, the Hager brand is approved in, in the UAE and in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi as well. So it could be used with ADNOC. Okay. As I say, in what route? I would answer that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Hegel is a brand. I would like to say that, uh, yeah, we are approved by the ADDC as well as in Alin Authority AADC, and uh, our distribution boards are already approved, and Hager MCCBs are also used in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. If during the checking the parameter, checking short circuit occurs, then more chance to burn electricians. Uh, so, as I understand from uh, here, if any fatal uh, failure happens, any technicians or the electricians on the board, uh, so for the short, it will, it will give a short circuit, short circuit. So in this case, uh, Huggers they has another uh, device solutions uh, available, that kind of safety solutions. Um, we can uh, introduce, if you are uh, interested, it's a arc fault devices and the residential devices, uh, available in our portfolio. It is another field actually. But, but that kind of uh, that kind of happens, you can assign an alarm for the energy monitoring side. Okay, there is a something happened uh, in the system and you are not there. Or somebody uh, unauthorized person doing something in your switch here. So you can define an alarm uh, to your software. And the alarm, so, uh, this software gives an alarm uh, by sending email or SMS to you. There is something unusual happened in your system. So we can do. But for this, the safety reason, it's another connection of the devices, as far as I understand from you the question. Usually these MCBs are placed inside the 
withdrawable module inside the how this energy will be monitoring, how will be connected. Okay, uh, as the presentation I mentioned about, there is an extra uh, external monitoring device uh, for, for the MCB. You connect this device directly to the MCB and uh, in front of the uh, switchboard, the visualization is like a network analyzer, but the display is very thin than analyzer, very thin than analyzer. All measured data directly comes from MCCB. Even you open the uh, door of the cabinet and you can check the parameter uh, over MCCB too. There is both way available. Uh, so you can check your parameter in front of switchboard 2 with the extra modules. Okay. Uh, we have a program, I think, for the only dedicated... Uh, if you checked our uh, program, webinar program, our many app team... Uh, is sharing the webinar, upcoming webinar programs. Uh, dedicated, this dedicated MCB is named as HQ+. Uh, so in this we webinar, uh, my, colleague, uh, my colleague will tell more details about these MCBs. Is load management option also available in systems since the H3 uh, MCBs are being used for monitoring? Can we do load uh, shunting through this monitoring system? Of course, you can do this. Uh, what we said, there is uh, IO modules, uh, IO modules available. Um, when you operate the IO modules and you can detect automatically uh, or uh, trigger short trips of the MCBs by using software. But uh, we are not recommending this uh, because of the safety. It's mostly used for uh, alarm situations. For the uh, remote operation, can be done, but we are not recommended because somebody can, uh, in this case, there will be operational things or something like that, but can be uh, done by software. Complying with IAC, your communication is complying with the IAC protocol. We need to check it and uh, taking uh, this note, uh, we will reply to you according to this protocol, it's available or not. Okay. What are the solutions for the arc flash happens inside the switch gears? Do you uh, do use any sensors or detectors? Actually, we have an extra solution, uh, arc fault uh, detecting devices for the main switchboards. It's a separate device. Uh, one, it's like a sensor checking the bus bars. When uh, there is an arc between bus bars, directly sensor sends uh, a signal by uh, fiber, uh, uh, fiber cable and operates in under uh, under one seconds uh, in during the milliseconds uh, operation. So we have a solution for arc flashes uh, for the main switches. We can share the details about it. our uh, team uh, shares the details about this device too. It's an out fault detecting device. So, 
Is it allowed to use multi-function meters on the final distribution board? Is it allowed to pull Modbus control cable on enclosure along the width? Okay, this is the uh, this question is uh, we are uh, coming. Uh, people are asking too much. In the final distribution board, uh, what you require actually uh, it is for the multi functional meter you can use, but uh, what you want to monitor actually. Okay, this final distribution board, if it is belongs to one uh, residential area, it is unnecessary. But for the manufacturing side, okay, you can use a multimeter uh, for it. Multimeter. You, you need to check the voltages and the currents and also uh, the power values. In the industry, okay, you can use. For the residential and the commercial side, what we said, we talking about the energy monitoring system and uh, our main uh, issue is consumption so we the single phase single phase energy meter will be enough for this solution for the modbus cabling uh, it's another uh, option we recom uh, we recommend to use actually this type of Modbus cables with the shielded ones because okay uh, as you said the disk cables is across with the other energy cables uh, there will be an electromagnetic field but today uh, technology with this, uh, this kind of communication communication cables with the shielded ones they are not affecting from the electromagnetic fields from uh, electricity, uh, electric line. Okay, shall we? How many uh, communication devices can be managed with Agardio Manager? Uh, it is not about actually for the device. Uh, it is a Modbus rule. Every Modbus uh, device can be connected uh, up to 30 uh, first device. Uh, 30, uh, 30 second device, if you require a 30 second device, you need to use another communication device. This is a Modbus rule. Uh, after 30 first device, uh, unfortunately, communication of uh, devices is not uh, healthy because every device has a serial connection with each other. So it's, it will be, for example, 31st device for the one communication device, another communication device, 31st devices. So it will be, uh, the map will be like that. So after that, you assign from your software, you assign zones, uh, which communication device uh, connected to which facilities and which zones available. So it can be easily adaptable uh, by this. Okay. Uh, Shano, another question? Is your devices can integrate it with other stem from other one? Yes, it is available. Uh, the easiest side is uh, our software is more so user uh, user friendly. Uh, there is no deep IT knowledge, but this means uh, it's only allowed for the hardware devices. No, uh, you can connect any third-party devices too. It is about reading Modbus uh, mapping. Uh, every every devices which has a Modbus protocol output, there is a uh, Modbus map in the devices. When you uh, write which parameter one wants to monitor, you can manually enter that parameters to the software and you start to monitor. There is no restriction, okay, you can only use the Hagar products, it will be uh, not adaptable for any third party device. It can be adaptable too. Okay.
in order to access the software do we need to own place of the building so uh, in that kind of software there is a uh, two option but today huggers offer a web browser solution web browser solution this means uh, there is a two option you can use Hagar cloud system like mobile phones we are using today cloud system or you can use your own server FTP server system so after that you can uh, uh, define any IP address and you can reach your parameters wherever you want so you don't need to be used uh, you don't need to be in place of the building uh, that kind of uh, software is available in the market uh, the, this means on uh, on-site type softwares it's called as on-site uh, this is a web-based type software okay Shannon another question yeah, yeah. thank you very much. No? okay thank you very much hopefully uh, it is helpful and uh, understandable about for our system and i would like to thank you for uh, uh, my colleague shanoi for the moderate modernization for the, this webinar uh, and thank you for everyone for joining this session sorry Ali, we have a few more questions before closing the, oh, the webinar okay. just coming now Can we add calculations? Uh, I mean uh, calculations about uh, billing system. I assume like that. Okay, there is a tariff system in software. If you define the tariff systems in software and if you enter the uh, unit cost of the tariff times, software gives you uh, annual or not 100% actually, uh, annual cost of monthly or yearly or daily, whatever you, you want to calculate actually. It, it can be available. What is the minimum requirements to install an Agardio system? Agardio Manager Plus uh, multifunction meters are enough to monitor energy. Uh, what we said for the energy monitoring, we need three steps: measure, uh, measure, analyze, and uh, act. For the measurement side, whatever the, the device, what do you want to use, which has a communication protocol, it should be a multifunctional meter or air circuit breaker with the communication protocol. One Agardio manager is enough, is collecting data from device and you need to define that Agardio manager to software for monitoring. It will be enough. So minimum requirement is three. One device, converter and software. Uh, can we set alarms for and receive remote notifications? Yes, the PFC system is the, one of the most important uh, issue uh, for the energy monitoring system. In the many markets, uh, unfortunately, uh, PFC is, uh, how can I say, the loads are, uh, the loads are unbalanced and people are paying too much money for unnecessary Inductive, uh, inductive and capacitive loads. Uh, this is the part of actually energy monitoring. I uh, didn't mention about the PFC. The PFC is and other deeply details. Okay, these PFCs can adaptable to uh, software and you can define an alarm. For example, you can set a capacitive consumption as an alarm or inductive consumption 
as an alarm. You can define cos phi value as an alarm. Uh, so in this case, you can directly uh, implement your system according to your uh, alarm and you can get rid of unnecessary penalties for using extra capacitive uh, or inductive loads. System is multi-level use. Yes, it is available and you can assign an authorization for every users. For example, one is admin can configure and uh, change the system parameter, define an alarm, everything else. One is admin user. Another is less restricted than uh, less restricted than admin and another third user can only monitor and get the data that uh, you can define more than one user and you can assign an authorization for every user i think uh, yeah, finished yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It was uh, too thank much you, questions. Thank you. Now you know we're done we're with done the with questions, questions and we are, and we are running, running out, out of time, time actually. actually. So thank you everyone, thank you everyone for joining this webinar. I just uh, encourage you to please take a minute to after this webinar session to give us uh, your feedback regarding this uh, session so that we can always improve uh, your webinar experience for the next sessions. Thanks. Thank you very much. And uh, I just like to encourage you again to stay in touch from our website, uh, from our LinkedIn account, so that you can follow the next uh, webinar sessions. There were lots of questions regarding uh, MCCBs also today. There will be a session soon. Uh, you can click on the link here on the top of the screen to register to this session. And uh, thank you, everybody. Have a good day ahead. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.